I purchased a faulty Xbox One off of eBay for £32.99. The problem, you're wondering, supposedly has a faulty HDMI port. No other known faults have been listed on the listing. Let's take it on over to the bench and have a look at the fault. Warning, this might contain really bad micro soldering. Enjoy. First things first, we have put our gloves on, so you never know what you're gonna find in some of these packages. First impressions, not bad condition, you know. I've seen a lot worse, let's put it that way. There's a tiny bit of like crust over here, but yeah, it doesn't actually look too bad. Again, back condition, not horrendous. Has the console been opened? No, by the looks of it, unless that's been, has that been cut? There's a high chance that the hard drive is gonna be in this machine, that's really cool. If I tilt the Xbox like that, you can see some of the mess that's inside. The issue was supposedly the HDMI port. How is this looking on the face of things? Oh yeah. I think there's actually something inside, like what is that? I'm doing this through my viewfinder, by the way. What are you? It's a little bit of wood. Why? You can see from over this side of the port, it kind of looks damaged in some way. I don't know, it just kind of looks a bit like burnt, I guess, or the being exposed or someone's eaten it or something. I don't know. Let's get the console apart and investigate a little bit further. I'm a bit hesitant to actually test this machine, but I feel like I kind of have to. I'm just gonna make sure that it turns on. So let's double check that now quick. This is a known good power supply. It has been through the wars. This is the light that we're gonna be paying attention to. Once I plug this in, this light should stay white. So it, could, it should go from orange to white. Does it do that? It goes to white, does it stay? Yes, that's good. Let's see if the console now turns on. And it does. That's also really, really good. And I'm now gonna see if I get a display on my screen. No image, nothing's coming up. And hopefully it's not destroyed my HDMI cable. I don't think it has, so we are all good. Let's get this console taken apart. First thing we're gonna do is just cut the sticker here. Take off this grill. Oh, dear. On second thought, I'm gonna take this apart outside and get rid of all of this horrific dust that we see. Just being able to give it a clean and this console is not <laughs> in a good condition. I don't know what this stuff is. Like, I, I don't know, it's like some sort of cereal or something, like, I just don't know. But this, this needs to all come off. It needs like a heavy bath. I'm gonna continue taking the rest of the console apart, get the motherboard out and uh, have a closer look at the HDMI port. Grab Bill the Bosch. The console's now been taken apart to a better standard. Oh, just disgusting. Not horrendous, actually. Not too bad at all. I'm just gonna go and grab my Hoover because I've now got a lot of dust on my desk. As you can see, the board is now apart and the HDMI port does not look healthy at all. So I'm gonna take that off and then we're gonna closely inspect it under the scope to see exactly what's happened with this port. If we can, that is. Where it says number two, this is where the HDMI is, the faulty one. First off, we're gonna apply a little bit of flux to each of the pins. And we're gonna use our soldering iron to put some low melt solder on where those pins are. This will reduce the temperature of the solder that's already here, meaning that when I use my hot air gun, it's a lot easier to get the port out without harming the board. If you use higher temperature solder, it takes the board longer to heat up, you could damage other components, etc., etc. I feel like a lot more can go wrong. For those interested, I use a TS100 soldering iron at a temperature of 400 degrees Celsius. Previous to that, I was using a Yahoo 853D hot air station mixed with a soldering iron and it wasn't that great. Finishing up on the back of the port, we move to the front, take a toothbrush, clean the dirt, grab our flux, apply the flux and low melt solder to this side of the port. And why not add some more flux to the back of the port? We then grab our hot air gun. This is set to a temperature of 480 degrees Celsius with a fan speed of eight out of eight. We use this until the port drops out of place. More flux. Here I'm just applying some more heat so that it's easier to wick away the leaded solder that's in the holes. Sometimes this can be a little bit tricky, so I opt to use my solder sucker, which makes the process easy. I actually think as well that the tip I was using was a little bit too small. Here I apply 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol and use a toothbrush to clean the job. And now we head over to the microscope and a very serious Joey. We're gonna put some flux on the pads, clean them up a little bit with a soldering iron, then use some soldering braid to suck up the excess solder. Then clean the area with IPA and a cotton bud. Here we apply some more flux and low melt solder to the pads. 
Then I take the connector and do the exact same thing. This will ensure a good connection between the port itself and the board. Here I'm using a small fine tip for the soldering iron and I thought it would be best to solder the legs on individually. I see a lot of people use a bigger head and drag it across but I don't feel like I'm quite ready for that and just wanted to make sure it was as accurate as possible. All in all it was to minimalize mistakes, I thought. After giving it a good clean, I gave it the nudge test. And as you can see, they're not all that good. So I decided to add some more solder, which was way too much and ruin everything. Clearly this wasn't working. So logically I decided to switch to a bigger tip and drag the rest of the solder across the pins, hoping that they would then solidify more. What I should have done is wicked away as much excess solder as I possibly could. Because of the surface area of the tip and how far I pushed it back, it actually melted the plastic on the connector. For some reason I thought that the melted plastic would be fine, however when testing with continuity, it turns out it wasn't fine. I had to remove this port and start all over again. Don't worry, I'm not going to bore you with the majority of it this time, just some little highlights. I've put the hard drive back in, I've put the HDMI in, I've put the front panel connector back in, and I'm now gonna see if we get an image, if it displays, if it does, wicked. I have faith, the pins seem to be very strong. The second time doing it, I just took it a lot more slowly and was more precise, and didn't put a ton of solder on. If this works, I will clean the Xbox from the case, I'll give it a nice bath and stuff, and if you wanna see the after photos of that, head over to my Instagram or my Twitter, the links for them will be in the description down below. Enough jibber jabber. I'm turning it on in three, two, one. Okay, the lights come on, which is a good sign. It's got power, the fan is spinning. Do we get anything pop up on the screen? Please? Come on, man, let's go, yes, sweet. That's straight in a 1080p as well, I think. I hope it boots the dashboard as well, because that means it's got a fully working hard drive. Because I'm not sure if the boot logo, the Xbox One that you see on the screen right now, I'm pretty sure that wouldn't show up if it wasn't working. 
and there we go just like that we're on the desktop if you do want to let me know how you enjoyed this video i tried a little bit of a different take to it it was a commentary after i had done the soldering job I had a really really loud fan in the background so i thought i'll give this method a try and if people like it i'll do some more of it so if you enjoyed my commentary over the soldering make sure you drop a comment down below if you didn't enjoy it let me know and tell me you prefer the other style of videos that's absolutely fine i just want to make sure that the content i'm providing you guys are enjoying obviously i want to show you guys the ups and the downs that's why i included me failing in this video that is a successful hdmi port repair on an xbox one hope you have a great weekend and i will see you in the next one peace